Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode of my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you behind the scenes and talk you through my thought process, my workflow, and my editing of a particular image from a recent shoot. Now, this week, I'm really excited to share an image with you, and it happened when myself and Bernard were being fluid around the light that was guiding us in everywhere that we went. In fact, if you haven't seen that episode, I'll link to it up here. But the particular image that I've chosen now to talk you through on my edit was one that was absolutely amazing. Now we had seen these light rays all over the place and we drove to one particular location with an incredibly beautiful scene. So I'm going to give you a look at how I edit this image on my computer in Lightroom Classic. Let's go. Okay, so here we are now on Lightroom Classic, and here is the image that I chose for today's edit. Now, as you can see with this image here, it is quite dark, and the reason it's quite dark is because I had to make sure that I was exposing for the highlights. Now, if I look at the histogram here, it's telling me that I have some areas that are bright and some areas that are dark, and if you click on these on either side here, what you'll see on the corresponding image, if you look up here, is that's your highlighted area. So there's a couple of areas there where the whites are whiter than white, and if I look at the blacks, being blacker than black then I've got in the tree here on the right hand side so I've exposed it to the maximum that I could get out of the scene now the reason I had to expose this way was because the light was quite bright and it was also very dynamic it was moving right across the entire scene now the first thing that I want to do with this is and it's something I do quite often but I want to do it here just to give you an idea how powerful Lightroom has become so if I just click on the auto what that will do is it'll take a look at the entire scene and see what can it do, what can it bring up. And what it's done effectively is if I give you a look at the before, is here on the darker side of the image, and now after, is it's created more detail that was there in the shadows. Now I still have some areas here which are whiter than white, and I still have some areas here which are blacker than black. But for me, I'm not really interested in those because I'm more interested in these stunning light beams that were coming down through the scene. The second thing was that when I was taking the shot, it was quite far away. Now, I think I was shooting this here. I'm at 16 mil, which is the widest I could get because I wanted to try and get in all of the mountains. I wanted to get here and all of that area. So what that effectively did, did was create a much bigger scene than what I was needed. So my first step that I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at my crop because I do want to crop this image and I want to be able to bring it in quite close to the scene. Now also when I look at this here, when I look at the sky, it's the clouds which are nice dark and moody. So I want to bring out as much detail as I can within them as well also. So by looking at this, I think it works best as a 16.9. So by 16.9, that takes away a piece of the top, takes away a piece of the bottom. But moreover, I want to bring more attention in to these. So I'm going to take quite a heavy crop coming in. And then on top of that, if I look at this, and actually what I'll do is I'll make this overly bright so you can see exactly what I'm looking at here. So forget about the blown highlights, but I want to show you something on the base. So it's an important one to have some sort of context and framing within your image. So for this, for argument's sake, this looks nice, but I'm not getting a full curve coming around here. So if I drop down my crop slightly, now I've got the full curve. You can see that it's at the side of a lake. You've got a bit of context in regards to the uh, ground that's below. What it also does is it removes a lot of the cloud on the top. So when I I take this exposure back to where it should have been you'll see now that I've got the most important ones that are there I could keep the ones that are up here but for me they're kind of too far away from where the action is happening so I want to be more concentrating on the overall light that's there and then again if I bring this back up just so you can see what I'm thinking of if I now bring up the exposure of the shot overall now I've only got a couple of little areas here that are overly bright and my blacks are not even clipping there's one tiny little piece here inside in the trees which is incidental so I think from that point of view auto has done a relatively good job but I want to make it brighter again. So if I give you a look once more at what auto has done, it makes the image quite dark. I want to be able to bring the exposure up a bit more and looking at the histogram will tell me the areas that I can and what I can play with. So I'm going to bring this up here first and foremost here and I think that is bright enough now for me within the image. So that's the main thing and a lot of that has actually been done but I can still play with my highlights but being careful of my highlights as well because if I bring my highlights down, it brings them down from up here but we have to be conscious because again this is my star of the show which are these light beams. So if I bring my highlights back to where they were, you see there's a slight variance in difference right above that, but the light light beams are not being affected. Now we're bringing the highlights down as well. You see I get more mood and drama in those clouds on the top. 
shadows they're up quite high now i mean looking at that if i bring my shadows back to standard you can see that this detail is coming out in the back here but i think the frame here at the front is a bit too dark and I, again like i said i had to do that because i didn't want to blow my highlights so with that in mind i'm going to bring my shadows up and if i look at what it looks at at 100 i mean it does bring up the shadows the detail and such is there but i think it's a slight bit too much so i'm going to bring that back down ever so slightly just to kind of create more of a natural tone in the image and then looking at my whites which again are going to be these areas here so I can take that if I bring my whites down you see that it starts to make those rays almost become incidental if I bring my whites up it makes them a bit more pronounced but then I also have the challenge here of the sky again because it was such a high dynamic scene so I'm going to use my histogram here to tell me how much I can bring up my whites and here I've got a tiny piece that's there if I look if I bring it up a small bit more that I think is enough for me blacks again you know this is interesting because again if I bring my blacks all the way down we kind of go back to where we would have started from which is an underexposed image so I want to bring the blacks up and that's mainly going to only affect on the foreground and within the tree I don't want to go all the way up here because it kind of becomes a painterly effect so I want to kind of have a bit brighter than what it was so I'll raise those by there texture I don't think I need clarity I don't think I need now if we look at dehaze if I bring my dehaze up the light beams become a bit more pronounced that's there but also it really makes those clouds dark and moody but it also overall makes the image quite dark so if I bring up my haze to 43 I have to compensate that on an exposure point of view as well just to keep that image bright enough that it doesn't seem overly dark and moody vibrance the auto has set it here to 14 if I bring it back to zero there's not much of a difference but like i said on previous episodes of this it's always good to be able to have a touch of vibrance introduced into your image because when you're shooting in raw it is a flat image so i'm going to bring my vibrance up here uh, uh, 24 i think is where i had it yeah i think i'll go to around 23 that's perfectly fine and then saturation if you notice it has brought it down by minus one i'm not a fan of saturation i'm more inclined to go to vibrance so i agree with what it's done here from the saturation point of view now, this image here effectively could be done, but I want to try and play with this here to try and get more out of this and try and create and save some of the texture in the sky above here. I have two ways of doing that. I can go in and I can use a brush. I can use a linear gradient or I can use a radial gradient. Now, I could also go in as well on a range and say, okay, I want to look at the luminance range and I can click on the brightness here for argument's sake. And what that's going to do, it's going to select all of these bright areas and the corresponding areas below. Now, all I'm doing effectively is playing with those. So if I want to look at that and say, okay, of those, what do I want to change? If I bring my shadows all the way down, it's only affecting in these areas here. If I take my exposure and bring it down, it's again only affecting those areas of the brightness that are corresponding to that. And if I take my blacks, take my blacks down here, what that's effectively doing now is making that cloud dark and moody but it's also as well if you see here bringing out these light rays now one area that i look at this image that i'm not overly happy with but in, re in reality i could nothing about it was the bright areas you see here in the lake that is a direct representation or reflection of what you had in the sky but looking at the histogram it is bright but it's not blown so i can't really get rid of that unless i wanted to clone everything out but in reality then it's not going to make sense if the sky had these light rays and this bright area of course the, the, the water is going to um, reflect that so i think from that point of view that image here looks quite well now what i also want to do is I want to go into my detail here and I want to check have I got any noise now if I look at this uh, and you've seen how I use this before it's something that I normally do as a final step but I think there will be noise on this image because I underexposed it like I said from the outset on purpose so if I look at an area that I know would have been dark which is around here by the boat you see without and with so effectively it removes the noise it's there but it doesn't make the image or turn the image to mush if I look again, or I had a bit of noise here in the background from a hazy point of view, that smooths it out nicely. So I think I'm gonna pause that for a moment, have a quick look as to see if there's anything else I need to do. Oh, there is. I need to make sure that if I've got any um, sensor spots. Now, I know if you've watched previous episodes in this, I have a sensor spot up on the top left-hand corner here, but from the uh, crop, I'm actually getting rid of that. So if I now go in here to look at this and say, what do I want to do? I want to fix it. How am I going to see it first and foremost? Well, I'm going to use my dehaze trick. So I'm going to whack my dehaze all the way up and I'm going to have a look then to see, is there any areas that have got sensor spots? I don't seem to see any. And if they are, they're buried in those dark 
clouds. So there's nothing jumping out at me here from this point of view. So I don't need to worry about that. I'm going to put my dehaze back. I think I had it at 43. And now the image goes back to normal. Zoom back out. There's one other thing as well here. And I just spotted that there was a bird and the bird was flying across here. Now my exposure time was 1 160th of a second. So that bird is not exactly 100% sharp. And I think it's quite incidental in the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just remove that bird. So that will take another area here. And now that's the bird gone. Now zooming back out, if I take this into fit, just to make sure that I'm happy with the overall view of the image. I think the way I've got to change now is that this tree acts as a nice bookend to the image and stops it eye going off to the right hand side. This light does bring more attention from the overall aspect in the background. I do like all this area here and I'm still getting in all of the mountain and then I'm also keeping this curve which brings the eye through the image and up to these light rays. Final thing I want to do here is look at the overall image and say do I need to reduce the exposure slightly because it's a bit too bright for me and now if I bring it down to around here I think that looks better because you can see that you've got this rip in the clouds here you've got these light rays that are coming down and they complement the scene overall so final thing then go back into detail click on denoise and click on enhance so I hope you enjoyed my behind the scenes look at this fabulous location from that excellent trip that I had with Bernard and it doesn't stop there because on next week's episode next Sunday I'm excited to really share a new concept which is something that I've done before, but I don't think I've ever made a video dedicated towards it. And it was actually Bernard who came up with the idea and Bernard had done the intro as well to next week's episode. And it's about having just one shot. Ordinarily, we go out, we take a number of images, but this now was slightly different. We wanted just one shot. So can't wait for you to see that. It's an amazing location. And would we get the light? Would it work out? You have to join me on Sunday to see. So thank you very much as always for watching the channel. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlange folk. <laughs>